Welcome everyone to our uh, our Tech Tuesday. Um, however, we're doing it today on Thursday. Um, the key question here is 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 about email. Um, email, well, it's, it's it is the primary communication tool between you and your clients, uh, you and your colleagues. Um, the biggest problem is that it was designed almost 50 years ago and um, security was not an issue back then. It was designed for campus-to-campus uh, -campus communication between you know, uh, university students who uh, sent and uh, professors that were doing research and everything was open, just like the rest of the internet. Um, security wasn't thought about, uh, malicious activity really wasn't thought about. Um, the other thing is that because it's so common, uh, it's the biggest target for compromising uh, your firm's information. So any, if you wanna get into a, um, any business, you're gonna try to get in through email um, just to get credentials, um, to try to insert into a network, you're gonna to try to insert malicious uh, software through email execution. Um, so that's the, the initial part of the problem. Um, I wanted to go through the threats first, and, and some of you may have experienced some of these, um, but uh, just uh, to be specific, we're looking at four different kinds of threats. There's information leaks, and that could just be uh, sensitive information that gets sent out inadvertently or, or sent you know, by request. Um, if it's sent over open channels, it could be, it could be listened into, it could be inter intercepted. Um, and uh, we'll go through what some of those are in a little bit when we talk about the, the types of information. Then there's phishing, um, and that's basically to, uh, to lure you in to um, install something. Uh, it's usually sent to hundreds or thousands of people. Um, there's a, uh, it gets through some of the email filters by in, embedding hidden text to make the email look more or less malicious because of the content. Um, and uh, that's targeted to big people or, or to, to big groups of people. Um, there is spear phishing, which is a form of that where you're specifically targeting people. Um, and this is, this is the ones that usually catch law firms because they'll go after an administrator, they'll go after, um, well, it, it could be a, go after a lawyer who's very busy to go after them and just try to put some pressure on them to, to click and, and put their credentials in. And then they get, um, they, they get uh, access. And we'll talk about how that falls into play in a little bit here. Uh, whaling uh, is, is a, a term that they call, you know, where they're going after the, you know, the big fish, right? So even though a whale is a mammal, right? they call it whaling. Um, but that's, that's a form where they're, they're going after specific, very specific information. Then the other issue you have is regulatory compliance. Um, you know, there's, uh, Illinois has uh, Personal Protection Act uh, where you have to control the personal identifiable information. Uh, you don't want that floating across open emails. Um, payment card industry, uh, PCI uh, has specifications for protecting uh, credit card information. Uh, and HIPAA, obviously, uh, if you're aware of the personal health information, um, that's just for healthcare transactions. And you may actually be passing on medical records and stuff like that between doctors and, and you know, for, um, you know, uh, for some of the cases you might run into. So, uh, you may actually be handling PHI and may be responsible for uh, protecting that. And uh, that, that there's ways to ensure that you're, you're in compliance with, with that. 
So just to keep things in perspective, uh, those of you that have been hit will, will know that, that it's a pain in the neck when, when you've got something and you have to respond to it. For hopefully, if you've had any, that they, they are not very costly, but the FBI, um, Internet Crime Complaint Center, ICC or C or IC3, um, collects those complaints and, and they, they've aggregated these. Um, so DEC is uh, Business Email Compromise and it's um, you know, $1.7 billion loss last year. Uh, so that's, that's pretty significant. Uh, if you look, include ransomware in that, uh, which that's another, um, well, they have almost 9 million, but, it, but that's underreported because many people who get ransomware do not report the total loss. And sometimes they don't report any loss. They just say that they've been hit with it and they put a zero in the field. So that's, that's way undercounted. Um, there's probably somewhere around total and email things over in the U.S. over the last year, over $3 billion. Um, I think this all totals up to about $3.4 billion here. So um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a big business, and, and that's kind of the thing you have to think about. It's not people that are hacking you for fun or, or, or just games. It's, it's big business, and they're, they're there to make money. So I wanted to talk about phishing to start with. I have three samples of email here. Um, one of them is not a phishing email. The other two are. I, and I don't, if you want to guess, one going from left to right, one, two, and three, which is the real email and which is the, uh, if you want to type it into the chat, that would be really, really good. If you just, if people want to put some guesses in there, which is the real one. Does anyone want to put a guess in? All right, well, I'll talk about them then. Um, so the middle one is a real email from Apple. Um, and it has some indicators that, that let me know that it's real. First of all, I do remember the transaction. Um, and uh, second of all, when I hover over the links, I will. No I notice that they are actually going all to Apple um, domains. Um, the one on the left um, is I obviously. If you look at the from, it's not from Apple, even though they have that little Apple support logo, which I don't know where they got that, but it actually makes it stand out that they're not from Apple. Um, on the right hand side, also you can see that it, the email address is not correct. And the, even though it says applied.apple.com, if I hover over it, it, would, it doesn't have that. Um, so that is, that's kind of like very quick browse through of, of, of it. And you can see how if you're not paying attention, you could quickly um, make a mistake. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, the, this slide is very dense. Um, the others will be better. Um, this is an example of a spearfish uh, attack. Um, and the reason why I can I, I talk about this one is it starts out, if you look at the bottom, it looks like I was part of an email exchange with this person before. And that I said, don't forget to send me the bill. And then they say, you know, they tell me it was already sent, but I can click on that link to their portal and I would, I would get it. However, I've never done business with these people and um, I don't recognize the, the, the domain. Um, but again, if this went to someone in, in a mid-sized office and it was just an invoice and they, they changed it up a little bit as a correspondence with someone else. They could very easily say, oh, I've got to pay this, and they click on it, and then they're often in trouble. And so what does that trouble entail? Um, so we talked about the first part is identifying a target. So that's, that's the spear phishing 
in that case it was me it could be an administrator it could be someone else it could um, the next part is the grooming where they actually go in and they, they start to send a couple of spear phishings to see how they can get you to um, to click on and get the credentials once the credentials are in and I'm going to go deep dive into this one a little bit more on the next slide um, there's correspondence back and forth um, and you are typically not aware of that happening. Uh, that correspondence actually will happen um, uh, surreptitiously. It, it, it goes, it just bypasses your email system, goes through your email. Um, and the last part is a wire transfer is requested somehow, or is the money transaction is requested somehow. Um, what happens is they get your credentials, they go into your, and this, in this example, it's uh, Microsoft Office 365, but it is um, a rule that could be installed. And all they need to do is they, they get into your Outlook account, or your email account, they can find one client who looks like they might have a lot of money, and they will create a rule that Anytime an email comes from that person, it gets forward to them and then gets deleted from your system. So you never see it in your inbox. It just automatically gets forwarded to the hacker. The hacker can then reply back to them and continue to have a conversation with them. They think they're talking to you and they're talking to the hacker and then they ask them to do a wire transfer to make a payment on the invoice, something like that. Um, and uh, it's very easy for everyone to get tripped on, on this. And you won't know until your client calls and says, why are you sending me a second invoice? I've already paid that. And that may be a month past and that money's long gone. So that is, um, one of the things, if you've ever, if you're ever compromised, you want to make sure you go through and scan your configurations that nothing's been changed where these rules might have been set. So that's, that's one thing here that we, we really want to be careful of. So let's talk about how to actually protect yourself from, from this. Um, the first thing is filtering and everyone is aware of spam filtering. Um, it's in it's there's standalone spam filters there are filters built into some of the email systems um, finding the malicious inside of inside of all your email is kind of, is finding needles in a haystack uh, in these examples here you know we look at a hundred you know one uh, uh, 1200 emails and there were you know 86 that were uh, filtered for one reason and another 55 that were filtered for um, for another and if you look at this other one you can see you know about 200 emails a day and we're uh, at the peak and we're only blocking or quarantine you know somewhere around you know five or ten at, at a time uh, it's a game of numbers they only need to get one in you, yeah, so you're trying to keep them all out. They only need to get one in. And you, the issue here is that, you know, this is a great first pass through, but you need to have layers of, of defense in here. And um, so that's, um, you know, it, it's something important to have, but it, it's, it should not be your only layer of defense. Um, compliance, when we talked about that uh, I, earlier, so how do you prevent PII, you know, how do you prevent a credit card number or, um, you know, a social security number from being sent out? There is actually compliance and uh, rules that you can set up. This example is with G Suite, um, and you can actually turn on social security number and driver license number, and they have uh, a set of um, rules built into into the system to recognize whether or not that's in the email so if it finds a number pattern that matches the social security number or matches you know a credit card number it can it can tag that email bounce it back to the user 
prevent it from going out. You set up the different, you set out how much control you want over it, but you can actually prevent emails like this from, from going out. So um, that's something that's important. You should not be sending credit card information or social security numbers over, over open email. Um, if, and so, especially if, you, if you're doing credit card processing, you could lose your rights, the, the bank will rescind your rights to use them if they, if they find that, you know, a compromise has occurred and it was because of email going, you know, going out with credit card information. Um, you'd have to just apply it to another, to another um, processor, but it's still a, a hassle to, to deal with. Um, but even worse, if you if it were PHI information, health information, you could actually you know be liable for for penalties and and, uh, and other other litigations. One of the things you can do to um, prevent uh, email, and this is a little bit of a technical one, uh, but I put it in here because it is kind of important. A lot of people had their email set up five, 10 years ago and have not done anything to it since. Um, there's been advances in, in how email is um, set up in, in the network um, that will help reduce um, uh, risk. So the first thing, uh, which is probably what everyone has, is their mail exchange, and that it identifies what your mail server is. There's another field within the DNS which identifies other systems that can send email with your domain. So if you have a website or a marketing platform, um, if you want those emails to make it to the end user, uh, you need to include that within this other record, which um, not everyone has set up, um, but um, a lot of some people, or the majority of people, if they have anything, they have their SPF. Um, the other two, the domain key identif identification DKIM, and that is um, that prevents other people from spoofing you as well. It it provides a Kind of like the um, SSL HTTPS communication, it provides that. And the last one is uh, feedback, actually. So is that's the what they call DMARC. And what happens is, as you send emails, you build up a score, and you get reported back on that score of how many uh, emails. So if someone's trying to fake you, your score will change, and you can actually then set up rules to say if the score falls between a certain thing, do not let that email go through because we really didn't send it. So um, it's, it's, it takes a lot of tuning and it takes, that one takes time. Um, but that's, these are things that you can do that help ensure that the email communication is a bit more safe. Um, the next thing, which is probably one of the biggest, is, is augmented awareness. I mean, you, you're watching this here, um, but um, you want the whole staff to know about it. So augmented awareness is looking at, letting people know like how to look at an email, what's inside. So um, there are tools um, that are available. Uh, this one is Catch Fish. Uh, and if I can, um, what I'd like to do is um, switch screens here for a second and show you what catch fish looks like uh, in a live demo. So we will uh, let me see. Let me just log in here. And it gives me a text code.
and I am. So let's see, how do I set the switch to here? I'm going to stop the sharing for one second and go over to the uh, share. Okay, yes. So if I click on an email, I just want to make sure everyone's seeing it. Down here is catch fish. And I just click on email analysis. And I can then send that email for analysis. And that was just a random email that I took out of my inbox here. So I have no idea if it's good or bad, but we'll see what the uh, analysis comes out to be. I think Zoom slows down the communication a little bit here, but uh, we'll be able to come back to it. You know, there's a. So, this is part of a program, uh, of a training program, and I, I'm actually going to talk about it a little bit more um, in, in a second. Um, and it is a lot faster when uh, you're not running Zoom. So we will come back to this. Um, I'm just going to stop sharing that one for now. And I'm going to go back to the presentation because I will share screen. Okay. And when that comes back, I will come get back to you on that. Okay, so there's a training program that provides you weekly training. Um, and I, I'll show you that again when we, in the demo here after that comes, other thing comes back. It allows you to gamify it as well. If, if you want to do it within your firm, you can kind of see who can get, who can keep the best score. Um, you have a, an initial training, which um, is video based with some questions. And that, um, we've kind of lost your audio oh, i know that's uh hold on i just have to decline i got i was getting a call and it, it just overtook the, the computer um the uh, um so you can actually you get that initial training which takes about 45 minutes to go through and then there's uh basically a maybe a 60 to 90 second video that you watch that has four questions with it every week. And if you answer the four questions, it scores them for you and that adjusts your score. If you catch fish, um, um, if you, we can do fishing simulations with it. If you catch a simulated fish, you get points for it. Um, but you could also just use the tool as is and, and analysis. Um, Sorry, my other app keeps interrupting the audio. Um, and I'm going to reload this. And so uh, it also has the ability to um, put in policies and stuff like that. So there's there's a lot behind the platform that you may or may not make use of, um, but it's it's a great training facility and it has good information. Um, Another thing you could do is encrypted transactions. Um, and uh, the encrypted transactions are essentially um, takes your email and um, I've got two examples here. One that's built into Office 365 
And then another one, which is a standalone product um, that, that offers a few more features to it. Uh, but basically what it does is when you send an email to, to someone and you say that it's going to be encrypted um, in the, um, you do it with a drop down in Outlook, but in the other, you just do it within the subject line. If you put subject line within brackets, um, it will, uh, when you send, instead of going through the normal email system, it captures it and moves it into an encrypted email path. The end user or your recipient gets an email that they, with a link to it, they click on that link. They can then open up the email when they respond. All that e back and forth transaction is kept encrypted and um, out of your regular email system. So. Um, if you do need to send credit card information or other information, it's a secure way of doing it. The, uh, the one on the right also has secure file transfer. So you could do file sharing of, of documents in an encrypted fashion as opposed to doing them in, in an open fashion. And I am going to switch again here for a second, just so that you can see. So this is what that training looks like. You have a little quiz, a little video. Um, tendency to want to pick something, so something up off like the that. ground. And then, um, it has questions that you answer, and when you submit the questions, then it uh, will um, give you a score. Uh, you can see what you've gotten in past ones as well. So this is the training that's, that's available. Um, and I'm just gonna try catch fish again because I wanna do the analysis, see if it comes through. There was a I'm gonna let that one run and I'm gonna go back to this one. All right. So um, just to review the, the ways that you can um, protect yourself, again, it's layers that we, we talk about is, is filtering, um, compliance enforcement if you need to, uh, making sure that your network configurations, your, your DNS is, is correct, um, training with, you know, augmented awareness, um, training and, and tools that help aware of that, being aware of that. And then if you need to as well, encrypting your transactions, the ones that are specifically need to be, uh, uh, taken out of band to to prevent that. Um, and I just want to see where um, I know we had chat window here. Um, okay. So there was a question about auditing and updating the email security. You, kind of like spring cleaning, you probably should look at that once a year. Um, if you haven't done it within a year, you probably should look at it, see what needs to be done to your, uh, to your email system. Um, and you should kind of review the policies that you have, everything, because over time things change. And what was acceptable last year may now um, make you have a vulnerability. Um, some of the other things that um, uh, are you know, that, that, that come up is there's new technologies that, that can be applied um, um, to, to what's there. Um, and there's new threats out there that you probably want to address. So um, a good, um, a good uh, audit done once a year will, will help you with, um, with making sure that you're safe. And, uh, a bit about the training, if you are concerned about 
um, insurance premiums uh, and uh, insurance payout if you are breached. If you don't have a training program in place, if you don't have policies in place, uh, many insurance companies, that, not all of them, but many of them have um, language within their policy that if you don't have that, they don't have to pay out. So um, you may think you're covered, but without the investment of, of training and, and, uh, and proper configurations, you may still be, um, be liable for, for, that, for that money. So um, are there any other questions? We can open mic it if, if you want. Um, See. So this is being recorded. So if you want to play it back for someone else, you can do that. Um, the uh, oh, so yeah. So there are difference on the phone, uh, email security for the phone and for computer. Um, so that was one of the things actually. Um, the the one here from, from Microsoft only works on the desktop and, and web-based. It does, they don't have a, um, if you're using an Apple phone or something like that, they don't have a way to send encrypted emails. Um, and, but the, uh, but the brackets, the one with the, that uses the bracket, uh, that does work in any email client. Um, so there is, there's some advantages there. Um, uh, another difference is that um, you want to make sure that your phone has a passcode because if not, then someone can just, if you use your phone or someone picks it up, they, uh, they would have immediate access to your email and they can then begin to uh, do uh, password resets and, and gather all kinds of information on you. So um, uh, you want to make sure that that um, that's the case. Uh, most of, and well, actually, you have this on your computers as well. As long as your computers have passwords and, and don't instantly log you into the uh, when you turn them on into your email client, you you, know, you want to have at least one level, if not two levels, of logging in. Um, when I went to log in on the web, I have multi-factor authentication uh, for for that. So. Uh, before I can get into my email, I get the, um, depending on the email system I'm using, I get a text message or I have an, an app on the phone that has a passcode that I have to type in. Um, and uh, so multi-factor authentication is, is another piece to the puzzle. Uh, again, it's layers. There's not one quick answer to any of it. Um, uh, are there any other questions? I have a question. I'm still not understanding this DNS configuration. Is this something that I'm supposed to be able to do or am I just supposed to contact my tech person and say, hey, will you check on this? Yes, you have to contact your tech person. Yeah, this is, I put it in here and I know it's very technical, but um, it's something that should be looked at. Um, uh, there's, um, if one of the leading indicators of it's not right is um, people will start to tell you that you're, the email you sent them went into their spam folder. Um, if you get that more than once from someone or from, from different people, then very likely it's because you're not configured correctly. Um, and the reason why it goes into the spam folder is because it's harder to tell whether it's a valid email. And the harder your email is to tell whether it's valid or not, the easier you are to be spooked. So spoofing is when someone takes on your identity and tries to attack someone. Um, and very, you know, some of the spear phishing that occurs looks like it's coming from an internal person. Um, it, it's in smaller offices, it's, it's a little bit less likely, but in, in offices where you've got 15, 20 people uh, or more, you're, you're very likely to someone, you know, you're not in constant contact with the other people. If someone, if you get an email from someone, you don't necessarily know whether or not it's really from them. 
So that's why DNS configuration is very important. So when I get this DNS configuration done by someone competent, is it is it the emails that's going to make it better for the emails that are coming to me, or are the email because I I have a couple clients who have found my emails in their spam. Is is my yeah. configuration yeah. going to correct that? Yeah, you're that getting that fixed will will should may not prevent it, but will reduce it. Okay. I, you can't guarantee prevention on anything, but um, uh, yeah, it will definitely reduce it because what's happening, different, um, different email systems have different levels of, of strictness that they require. Um, so, um, and, and over time, more and more of them are getting stricter and stricter. So, uh, you know, with Google and, and Microsoft leading the way in strictness, um, because uh, it, it's such a big problem out there. I'll just go up to here so that uh, you can see. And, and these, so if you go to them, you tell you can just, you know, like screenshot this or, or send them to this video and say, please make sure these things are configured properly for me. And it, should, it should not take them a lot. They may need to get a lot of different credentials from you um, because they'll need the where your where this, these records are kept. They'll they'll need credentials to be able to edit them. They'll be they may have to get into your email system to get the the, the key from from the email system so that the key can be inserted in there. Um, they and they may need information like if you're using um, Constant Contact or Mailchimp, if your website sends web forms that kind of information they'll need to know because they, that information is for the SPF record. So um, uh, again, like I said, it's, it's, it's technical, but it's, it's important. So any other questions 